Hello, everyone. My name is Jing, and I'm from the uh, streaming analytics team. Today, I want to talk about how we power real-time analytics at Uber. First is about myself. I had my undergraduate in Tsinghua, and after that, I had my graduate school in Wisconsin-Madison. At the same time, I was doing research in Microsoft Jim Gray System Lab, mainly focused on graph analytics. After graduation, I joined a big data startup called Arimo for about one year. So currently, I have been in Uber for more than one and a half years, focused on streaming analytics. This is today's agenda. First, we will have an overview of streaming, talk about what is streaming and why we need streaming. And then we will see how we build the streaming platform at Uber, leveraging both in-house solutions and open source project. Finally, we will use some, case, use some use cases to show how we use the streaming platform to power Uber's real business. The first part is the overview of streaming. Many people may have questioned what is streaming. Unlike the batch world, where you will have a fixed data set, and you can run multiple queries over the data set. In streaming world, things are different. All the computation logics are predefined. It's more like a bot in the graph. It can be some feature or aggregation or drawing action. And the data is more like the water from the spout. It will flow through the system, flow through every computation logic. One big advantage for this kind of system is its end-to-end -end latency is very low, typically seconds level or even milliseconds level. And then, why we need streaming? This graph shows the value of data changes with time. As we can show, since the time the data is generated by the business event, the value will dramatically goes down. And when we finally make a business de decision, that's when we will get the value from the data. So what we are trying to do with streaming is to move the business decision along the curve to make it as close as possible to the business event so that we can get more value from the data. And this is especially important for Uber. As we are now, Uber is an on-demand service. When you call a trip on Uber app, you expect everything to happen immediately. You will see the surge price immediately and also get matched with driver immediately. For example, the talk about search. Uh, even five seconds or uh, five seconds, three seconds is very long time. We should, uh, happen, uh, we should make it happen within seconds. That's why streaming and real time is especially important for Uber. Then, Let's, uh, talk, uh, let's talk about how we build a streaming platform at Uber. In Uber, we will have multiple data sources. For example, the trips data, all the other data from Uber Eats, and maybe sensors data. All this data will go to Kafka, which is a distributed messaging system. In Kafka, users can either keep producing messages uh, or just uh, keep consuming messages. And the Kafka system will take care of the, all the remaining problem like data persistence or scalability or fault tolerance. Once the data goes into Kafka, it will go into a CineX, which is an in-house streaming processing platform. It's built uh, upon Apache Flink. And in a CineX, users can define their own business logics. For example, I want join two streams and then do one field day and then do some aggregation. All the data transformation will happen in this layer. Once the data is transformed, it will go into real-time analytics layer, which composed of Pnode and MemSQL. Once the data is in real-time analytics layer, users can query it, and the query latency will be very low, typically less than one second. And then let's deep dive into each part. The first I want to talk about is Kafka. As we mentioned, Kafka is a distributed messaging system. Users can either keep producing messages to Kafka or consume data from Kafka. And Kafka takes care about all the other things like persistence and scalability and fault tolerance. Kafka is very famous for its high scalability. In Uber, our Kafka cluster is handling trillions of messages per day, 
And actually, we have the second largest Kafka cluster in the whole industry. And our Kafka cluster can also provide the lossless semantics, which is super important for use cases like finance or payment. Next, I want to talk about Asina X, which is a streaming processing platform built upon Apache Flink. Uh, if you have an Asina X job, they will keep consuming data from Kafka, uh, from Kafka and then do the transformations in Asina X job. And then you can output the data to multiple things. For example, the pnode and memsql we have mentioned. And also you can output to Kafka Cassandra or M3 for alerting. And it's a self-service platform and uh, provide SQL as interface. So why we provide the Asina X as a platform? In very old time, if any engineers in Uber wants to set up a streaming job, he needs to do many steps. First, he needs to write Java code or uh, Scala code. And then he needs to compile that job. After the compiling, he needs to submit the job to Yang. After the submission, he still have to do a lot of work, including job logging, monitoring, and the alerting setting. All these are so tedious and they require a lot of uh, background uh, uh, knowledge. That's why we build Asina X. Now, if you use Asina X, you, when you want to have a streaming job, just go to our UI. And then you can click to add input, click to add output and write very simple SQL to define your business logic, and then clear deploy. All the other things, including deploy, de deployment to Yang, uh, monitoring setting or alerting setting will be handled automatically by the system. This has to a large extent increased our engineer efficiency. Previously, setting up a streaming job is more like take days or even weeks. Now it's more like hours or even just a minute. And the Asina X platform, it, uh, it, it is very famous for its low latency and high scalability. Typically, the end-to-end -end latency will be less than one second. What does that mean? So from the message get consumed by the system to the message get output to things, it will be less than one second. And also, uh, the scalability is very high. Currently, Asina X platform is also handling uh, more than one trillion messages per day, and uh, we have uh, tens of thousands of containers in production. We, we have summarized all our work in the engineering block. You can take a look if you are interested. And uh, we have also open sourced our work in GitHub. Next, I want to talk about real-time analytics. In Uber, real-time analytics is mainly composed of two parts. The first part is MemSQL, the second part is Pnode. MemSQL is an um, analytic engine and it has a lot of features. For example, it supports real-time time series query or geo query. And it also supports app search and the data duplication. It has a very effective caching layer. And the latency is very, also very low. It has seconds level ingestion latency and the sub-seconds level query latency. Pnode uh, was originated from uh, linking and uh, it has Lambda architecture to support both real-time data and off, uh, offline data. And the latency is also seconds level ingestion latency and the sub-seconds level query latency. Now we already know how we build the Uber's uh, streaming platform. Then we will go through some use cases to see how we use this platform to power Uber's real business. The first I want to talk about is the real-time driver uh, incentive system. In very old time, uh, Uber's driver incentive system is more like a weekly. That means at the end of the week, the driver can see how, how much incentive he can get which is not very transparent. So we build the real-time driver incentive system. That means uh, whenever a driver finishes a trip, within seconds, he can see his incentive update on his app. This has greatly added transparency to our system. The incentive has a lot of uh, technical challenges. First thing is about availability. The driver incentive system has to be a uh, fortnight availability. That means every month you can only be down less than five minutes. 
And then, of course, we need to ensure data correctness. That, that means we should have no data loss or no data loop duplication. If any data loss happens, that means we are missing some payment to our driver. And if any data duplication happens, that means we are doing some repetitive payment to our driver. And also, we need to tackle the scalability challenge because for Uber in some big event like New Year or Super Bowl, the volume can jump several X. And also, that's when the demand is highest. So we need to ensure the system can scale and can survive the peak volume. And of course, the end-to-end -end latency is very important, and we guarantee that P99 is less than 10 seconds. And we build the whole solution leverages the streaming platform. Whenever a, a, a trip finish, the trip message will go into our lossless Kafka cluster. And then the message will go into a, a signal computation job, which composed of multi-stages, which includes filter, aggregation, and the evaluation. When a trip comes, Filter is responsible for, to answer the question, what incentives is the trip valid for? Once it's the message passes the filter, it will go into aggregation. Aggregation is responsible for maintaining the accumulative trips the incentive have finished. And of course, evaluation needs to check uh, whether the incentive uh, criteria has reached. From the driver's side, uh, he can see all the changes in real time uh, in his app. The whole end-to-end -end latency needs to be less than 10 seconds. We achieved this by, uh, by guaranteeing the low latency in every stage, no matter whether it's lossless Kafka or each uh, a senior computation job. Their computation latency is in milliseconds level. That's why we can ensure the whole end-to-end -end latency is less than 10 seconds. And uh, we uh, use the lossless semantics in our Kafka cluster and the checkpoint system in Asina to ensure no data loss happen. What is a checkpoint? Checkpoint can happen maybe every 30 seconds or every one minute. It will remember the, late, the last position where a message gets successfully handled. So even your job fails, you will start from the last checkpoint. That means you won't lose any data. And of course, in the Asina computation jobs, we need to have a dedupe logic to ensure no data duplication will happen. Both the Kafka system and Asina system have four nice availability. And they also have very high throughput and horizontal scalability. In Kafka, the scalability is achieved by, uh, if you have a stream, you can split it into multiple partitions so that you can have more parallelism. When you need more uh, scalability, you can just uh, increase the partition number so that you will automatically gain more parallelism. And in Asina, when you start a job, typically you will assign some containers to it. For example, for this job, I assign four containers, each uh, with four gigabytes memory. When you need more scalability, you can increase the container number. For example, uh, up to four, uh, eight containers, each is four gigabytes memory. In this way, you easily gain more parallelism and scalability. Currently, the pipeline is serving millions of drivers weekly, and it's serving thousands of cities globally. And uh, it's processing hundreds of million dollars per month. The next I want to talk about is the real-time dashboard, the restaurant manager. It's a collaborative project between Uber Eats team and the streaming team. As we all know, Uber has a lot of restaurant partners. However, they don't have a good way to track or evaluate their performance. That's why Uber built the restaurant manager for them, so that it provides a lot of key metrics, like how much money you have earned today, how much money you have earned in the past seven days, what's the user's average rating for you, and what's the top items users like. And the restaurant's partners can see all these metrics in their dashboard. Once they get this information, they gain more insights into their business and they know how they can improve their business. 
The dashboards is also uh, build a leveraging streaming platform. Whenever there's some order or it's related information, it will go into our Kafka stream. For example, the Kafka stream will have both order stream, order uh, workflow stream, and some other stream. And then it will go into a CNX for data transformation and the computation. For example, uh, here we use an example. In this example, we actually join two streams and uh, filter out the unfulfilled orders. So that uh, after this transformation, we will know for each restaurant which orders are unfulfilled and can uh, add to potential earnings for the restaurant. Once the data is transformed, it will go into pinout. And our restaurant partners will query from the front end service to get the res uh, query result from pinout. The query will be ad hoc queries because each restaurant will query different data. And it also the query latency needs to be low because a uh, restaurant partner is using some browser, even one second the query latency, it will, it's intolerable for them. And also sometimes we have to handle combined real-time data and offline data. Uh, for example, for a restaurant, it will be interesting both uh, uh, the revenue uh, today up to now and the revenue in the past seven days or past one month. Currently, the restaurant manager is used by hundreds of thousands of restaurant partners globally. And even in our benchmark, the performance is really good. Even under 1,000 QPS, we can still guarantee the query latency P99 is less than 100 milliseconds. And we also ensure the whole end-to-end -end latency less than three seconds. That means from a user uh, has any update on his order to the data is queryable in pinot by the restaurant, it will be less than three seconds. Yeah, up to now we have talked about how we build the Uber's streaming platform. It's mainly composed into three parts. The first one is the Kafka, which is a distributed messaging system. And then it's the streaming processing platform, which is Asina X on Apache Flink. And then the uh, final stage is the real-time analytics part, which is Pinot and Memsico. And we have also shown how we can uh, use the platform to power Uber's real business. However, there are still a lot of challenges ahead if we want to make our system better. For example, currently we are working on providing unified customer experience in real-time analytics. As we mentioned, MemSQL and Pinot can serve different use cases, but from users' perspective, they don't care about what engines they are using, and it's also very painful for them if they have different syntax on different engines. If we can provide a unified customer experience for them, it will be much more user-friendly. And uh, currently, streaming processing platform is working on the lossless semantics so that we will uh, open door to use cases like Binance. And also, like we are trying to leverage GP, uh, GPU to improve our query performance. And the Kafka team is working on uh, the larger scale and the low latency lossless semantics. Yeah, that's uh, uh, of today's content.